This video is about using Unicode strings with VBA and the Win32 API. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and this is the second video about strings in VBA and uh, Win32 API. And if you haven't watched it, I strongly recommend you go and watch my first video on strings before continuing with this one. Because you need to know the foundations to really understand what's going on here, at least some parts. But with that being said, let's start with Unicode and VBA. So let's dive in into access right away and just one short remark. I show this in Microsoft Access, but it's really about VBA and the Win API. So it does not really matter if you're using Word, Excel, Outlook or whatever other VBA enabled application, you will probably face exactly the same situation there, only the user interface of the host application. Here, is, here it is Access or you might use Excel. That is different, but it will probably have the same advantages and you will absolutely certainly encounter the same problems inside the VBA environment. Okay, with that being said, let's dive into our application. I've got a small table here which displays some Unicode text. And I've got a little form here that is also displaying the Unicode data from the table. And we don't really care about the table and the form here. I just include these to show you that Microsoft Access has no problem whatsoever with storing and displaying Unicode data. And the same is true for the other Office applications. So, um, Beyond that, we don't need this form or the table. I just copied the text into the Windows clipboard and now I'm trying to use it here in a simple small procedure. And now I hit Control V to paste in the data I just copied from the form and we see already it doesn't look very good. I run this and yeah, it still doesn't look good. That is definitely not what was displayed a second ago in the access form. So there is definitely a problem here and well, um, let's ignore that for a second. Maybe that is just a copy and paste problem and we try a different approach. I prepared this function up here, get message text, and it's super simple. It's just using uh, the dlookup function to get the message text from the table messages I just showed you and I can choose by passing in the message ID which message or which text I would like to display. So that is super simple. I just call the function here and try to run this. And you see the result is different, but not really much better. So, well, there seems to be a serious problem with Unicode in VBA. And yeah, hmm, maybe, maybe the Windows API can help. 
and I switch over to our example from the previous video where we used the message box from the Windows API and I quickly copy this into a new procedure and I append Unicode to the procedure name and we don't need <clears throat> the immediate pane for now so just move this a little bit up and now we declare a string variable and we try to display our Unicode text with the API message box and I always save my stuff so and here we are <clears throat> it is a little bit different message box but the result is pretty much the same well even the Windows API seems not to help here so well maybe we should just give up well no no not so quick um let's let's take a step back to understand what's going on here and to do that i prepared a little presentation here um and yeah well we we need to talk some things through and the presentation is better to visualize a couple of things and i will go out of the way and now let's get started here so let's first think about ANSI what is ANSI ANSI basically is or ANSI is the American National Standards Institute and that defined um, a standard the, the Institute was in the process of defining a standard um, how to display character data on computers and they basically proposed yeah one character will be uh, represented by one byte and that will allow us to have 256 different characters and because that is not really enough to represent all the characters that are relevant even in the Western world, we need code pages. And a code page basically defines which 256 characters you can now display in a file or on a screen or in a computer program and if you need different characters well you need to choose a different code page then you can have 256 different characters and Microsoft um, saw that proposal for a standard actually and then they kind of hijacked that and Microsoft said yeah okay we we use the NZ standard but at that time it wasn't really a standard it was not completed and Microsoft um, also recognized it's not really complete for our purposes we need to um, tune and fiddle a little bit with it and then they changed the proposed standard and well yeah so the Microsoft implementation of ANSI is different from what later became the real ANSI standards and that is um, important to know because the Windows code pages these entities which define which characters are the 256 that are possible now these are different from the ISO ISO the International Standards Organization from the ISO character sets they are very very similar because they derive from the same source but they are not identical that is something to keep in the back of your mind but it's not really that important in 
our context today. The important thing is we have a very limited set of characters and one character is one byte. Now, for comparison, Unicode has more than one million possible characters. And currently there are 144,000 and some are actually defined. But the Unicode standard does not really define how these characters are represented in a computer document, in a file or on, in the memory of a computer. That is what Unicode, um, what Unicode transformation formats are for. And the most popular are UTF-8 and UTF-16 and to a much lesser extent UTF-32. There are a couple of others, but they are hardly used anywhere at all. And Microsoft choose UTF-16 as their Unicode standard. And it's UTF-16 LE, which stands for Little Endian, which basically says the um, with two uh, bytes, the, the first one is the more significant byte. And so with UTF-16, one text character, one letter basically is uh, stored internally as two bytes. So we have 16 bit. That is what usually is meant when in a Microsoft context someone talks about Unicode. In recent years Microsoft moved more towards UTF-8 for web based solutions because UTF-8 is basically the, the default standard on the internet for Unicode. But we are talking about the Windows API which is strictly inside the Windows local Unicode ecosystem and so it's uh, UTF-16. Okay, now let's Think about the Windows API. In our previous video, we encounter data types um, which are pretty much the standard for strings in the API, which are LPSTR or LPCSTR. And these are ANSI strings. And the definition the, of this data type is an LPSTR is a pointer to a null terminated string of 8-bit Windows ANSI characters. And if we look at that in memory basically, then the short text ABCD would be represented in memory in this way. You see the characters and their numerical representation and the bytes will store the numerical representation and at the end of the string there's the terminator that indicates this string ends here and that is basically a zero. Now let's compare that to VBA strings. VBA strings despite our experience with VBA which seem to be totally unaware of Unicode, VBA strings are actually Unicode strings, which are UTF-16 once again. And the definition of strings from the VBA language specification is, strings are sequences of 16-bit binary encoded Unicode code points. That is basically um, what we know about UTF-16. And internally, VBA strings are implemented as COM data types and it is the B string data type. And something to keep in the back of your head for a while, a VBA string is actually a pointer to a B string and the B string is a pointer to the character data. So there is basically two hops 
we need to we would need to uh, do to get from the VBA string to the actual string representation. And in memory, a B string and in that way also a VBA string is represented in this way. It has a length prefix, which is basically a D word that indicates the length of the string then we see our character data a b c d and now it is represented by two bytes but for our basic roman letters here we don't need the second byte so it will be zero keep in mind the terminator in normal strings, a single zero value would terminate the string. So that is a huge difference here, because in many, many characters we represent, there will be a zero in the second byte, because we don't need it. So if we look at the end of the string, we once again see a terminator, but now it's not a single zero, but two zeros that indicate the end of the string and that isn't for um, applications that are aware of the b string data type and its length prefix the terminator wouldn't even be required because the length prefix at the beginning of the data type already tells us how long is that string but it's important to notice that the terminator is still here. So now we need to look at something that is actually quite clever and helpful, but also a problem. And that is marshalling. Marshalling basically describes where uh, the process when one application needs to pass data to a different application with some sort of protocol basically. The data needs to be marshaled by one application so that the other application can understand it. And that is totally transparent implemented in the VBA runtime. And actually I couldn't really find any documentation on that. So in some sort, this statement here is a guess of mine, but I'm 100% sure that that is true and that this is what happens. Whenever we pass a string from the VBA environment to the Windows API, the VBA runtime automatically transforms our VBA Unicode string to an ENZIF string. And now here it happens, some magic in the middle, and you see on the other side there is suddenly an ENZIF string. And if we get data back from the API, again, marshalling will happen and transform the data back from an ANSI string to a VBA Unicode string. That is actually super, super helpful because it makes it easy for us to use the Windows API and the strings as I showed in the previous video. But now we want Unicode. So, we need to look at Unicode in the Win32 API. And now we come back to fill one of the holes I left in the previous video. You might have seen the capital A or capital W at the end of Windows API function names. And now here's the explanation, the A at the end says this is an ANSI function. And if there's a W at the end, it says it's a wide function and wide is a synonym used earlier in, in the Microsoft Windows context for Unicode data. So this is actually quite good because 
you might have noticed already there are Unicode enabled functions in the Win API. And these functions will use a different data type, LPWSTR. And the W here is for wide string. So a LPWSTR is a pointer to a null terminated string of 16-bit Unicode characters. That is almost the same as in our um, in our VBA strings, isn't it? That's quite good. So it's basically a Unicode UTF-16 little endian string. And it looks like this in memory. And you notice it is basically the same as our COM B string, which is the VBA string, but it is missing the length indicator at the beginning of the string. But it has the double zero terminator at the end. Now our marshalling comes back into play and I said it's an automatic transformation by the VBA runtime. That is going to be a problem because the VBA runtime is always converting our VBA string to an NZ string whenever we pass it to a function from the API. Whenever we declare the function using the declare statement and VBA calls such a function, it will convert from a Unicode VBA string to an NZ string. And on the way back from the function call, it will once again convert the NZ string back to a VBA string. And well, that basically means the marshalling process disables Unicode. We now know the VBA string is Unicode enabled and we have also Unicode supporting functions in the Windows API, but the hard-coded built-in marshalling process will not allow us to pass strings directly to the Windows API. So the solution I propose is we prevent the string marshalling. But how? This is a bit of an anticlimactic end. We just use the str ptr function and this means string pointer. So, okay, let's go back here. But before we write code, we just take a quick look at the documentation. And as an example, I use, um, I go back to the default printer function, even though we were at the message box. I am aware of that. But there are a couple of things that are basically the same and the documentation here is slightly nicer to point that out. First, let's scroll down here. And this is something I skipped over at the first part of the video. Here's a short remark, Unicode and NZ names. The get default printer function is available, available with the W at the end for a Unicode version and with the A at the end for an NZ version. So another important thing is the data type here which is an LPTSTR. And I skipped over that when I first showed you the documentation, but um, that is actually quite interesting because you might think, yeah, that is neither an NZ nor an Unicode string. And in some way you are right, but if we go to the Windows data types, um, documentation and search for LPTSTR, then we will see 
the LPT STR is an LPW STR if Unicode is enabled or an LP STR otherwise. So this is some sort of hybrid data type that will be will depend on the Unicode or ANSI function, which one we use. And now one final detail at the get default printer function. I pointed that out earlier, but I feel the need to do that again. We have our PCCH buffer, which indicates the size of the buffer. And the important thing here, it's the size in characters. That is important to know because now when we're dealing with Unicode, it's not just the, the situation that one character is one byte anyway, but one character is two bytes. So whenever we think about size of data in memory, then we need to be sure is the size required in bytes or is it required in characters? Okay, now, now jump, we are jumping back to our VBA code. And this was the, the documentation, the definition of the message box A function. And now we just change that into a message box W because we, we want to have a go at trying at least to use that with an Unicode string. But, well, well, I just run it. I have no idea what happens. Maybe access will do something stupid. No, it's not really something stupid, but this was the, this one here. It was not Unicode data at all. It looks a little bit like Asian characters, but it is actually, well, not really usable in any way. So what do we do now? I said already we need the string pointer function. But first, let's check the definition here. We have the message box text and the caption declared as strings. That is a bit of a problem because we know if we pass a string to the Windows API, the VBA runtime will kick in and do its best to convert Unicode to ANSI and that is not what we want. So we need to change the declaration here into a long pointer and that is oh let's let's go on here for a moment and continue with our functions so um we get our text from the table here which is unicode and now we want to pass in the message to the API and I said we need the string pointer function and let's look yeah the IntelliSense knows something about string pointer and if we go to the definition what happens here okay we get an helpful information we cannot jump to string pointer because it is hidden it doesn't tell us yeah, what you enter does not exist. It absolutely exists, but it is hidden. And if we um, show hidden members here in the object browser, then you will notice there is a hidden module here. It's called, sorry, it's called hidden module and it also has some hidden functions, these here, and there is one in the middle called string pointer, str PTR. 
So this is actually here. And we can use this function. So, and we also need to pass the title here as a string pointer to the Vin API. Okay, so let's run this. And you see, this is much better. That is a real definite message here that I can absolutely support. So, well, we, we basically solved our problem displaying Unicode data. That is great, yes. So we can pass Unicode strings to a message box and display it correctly. And so this rather useless message box or appearingly useless message box actually now has a value because you noticed the VBA message box built into the VBA runtime cannot do that. So if you want to display Unicode data in a message box, you can use the message box W function from the Windows API. But what about getting data from the API, getting string data from the API? If you remember our printer demo from the last video, we've got this get default printer name function and well, let's, let's look what it does. I haven't changed it at all, but I've got a new printer, which is a Japanese model. And well, yeah, you see, here is a problem. But we now know how to work with Unicode and the Windows API. So we can also go here change our definition of the function declaration and we change it to get default printer w and we will also change our string buffer here to a long pointer and now let's see what happens well maybe maybe we should be a little bit careful because when calling windows api stuff you should always double check that everything is in order. Um, but what we do here is we use the string function which repeats a character and that is the VB null char in this um, situation. And um, we, we do that as many times as the buffer size tells the function to. And if you remember, we were calling the get default printer first to get the buffer size. So the Windows API tells us how many characters it needs to give us the printer name and we fill the string with characters. So even in this situation where one character is represented with two bytes, this should still work. Okay, let's try this. Oh, we get a type mismatch. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, we cannot pass in strings directly. I was so excited that I forgot the most important changes here. So, of course, we need to use the string pointer function and we need to use it once again here when we pass in our actual buffer to the Windows API. And now let's run this. Oh, this is not what we wished for, 
is it? Well, 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 let's try something else. Um, hang on, we need to move that somewhere else because I want to use our message box function here and it is declared private. So I paste the display printer name function here and I also copy this over down here. And I also copy this and now instead of using the um, data from our table to display I call the get default printer name function to display our stuff and it's always Highly recommended to save your work before running Windows API code. This is definitely something Japanese and I told you I bought a new Japanese printer. So maybe this is its name. I can't really read this but it looks much better than the question marks we were seeing before down here in the immediate pane. So, what is the essence here? Our API call works. It works and can get Unicode data from uh, Windows representing the printer name here. And the problem we, we face down here is very similar down here in the immediate pane is very similar to the problem we started with when I copied and pasted code into the VBA development environment. And actually we are done with code. We can switch over here. Um, that is something that confuses lots of people. The VBA development environment is not really able to handle Unicode data. But the VBA runtime is. So if you write a program in VBA that deals with Unicode and you apply these Unicode API functions if you need to talk to the API or if you just have Unicode data queried from an access table or from a Word document or from an Excel spreadsheet and you process this data in VBA, there is no problem whatsoever. The VBA runtime executing your program is perfectly fine with Unicode and can absolutely handle this. Only the VBA development environment is still stuck in a different millennium basically and cannot handle Unicode data. And this is really important to know because it will kind of trick you into thinking your code does not work because whenever you use the VBA environment to print Unicode data to the immediate pane to display a message box, well, the message box is a runtime problem. I, I admit that. But also in the debugging mode, if you try to hover over a Unicode string variable, it will either display question marks or nothing at all because the VBA development environment cannot really handle Unicode. But internally it is still stored absolutely correctly there. So you need to know that to not get confused and think your code does not work when in fact your code works but the VBA environment cannot really show it to you. 
And so the message box I showed here, which seemed totally useless at the beginning, is actually a very helpful addition because for reasons I can't really understand, Microsoft did not update the VBA runtime to have a Unicode message box. But that problem is solved now, you know how to do it. And yeah, that is basically the end of today's video. I showed you how to read data from the API, how to pass string data to the API. I think we are finally done with strings. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed this video. If yes, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like to see more of these videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.